Oh, hi, everybody. Welcome. Thanks so much for joining us. We're in a few minutes to get everybody in here. Hello, everybody. Oh, we have some cute stuff for you today, TikTok. It is going to be an utterly adorable day. Hi, everybody. Welcome. Thanks so much for joining us. If you are here early, congrats. You get the cuteness for even longer. <laughs> And in the meantime, I invite you to share this live stream with your friends and your family. That way they can get it on the cute session together. Hi, everybody. Welcome. Hello. Thanks so much for joining us. Oh, we have some utterly adorable things in store for you today, TikTok. This is going to be amazing. Welcome, all. Hi. Let us know where you're watching from today. Love to know where you're watching our utterly adorable otters from today here on TikTok Live. Hi, hi everybody. Hi in Texas. Hello in Pennsylvania. Lots of people in Texas today. Amazing, welcome. Hello in Maui, Michigan, Miami. Back in Texas. What about locally? Where are my locals at? Here in Long Beach or all the way down to San Diego. Today is a very special stream TikTok. Today we are joined with the San Diego Zoo for a cute contest. And it's going to be really, really hard to decide who wins, I think. But today the aquarium is live here in Long Beach, California. We are also joined with the San Diego Zoo down there, of course, in San Diego. And we're going to throw it over to them in just a few minutes. But hi, everybody. Welcome. Thanks so much for joining us. We're here live at the Aquarium of the Pacific in Long Beach, California, with an utterly adorable guest. And I'm not just talking about the mom, just Sarah. I am talking about Miss Betty, the Southern Sea Otter today. Everyone say hi, Betty. Let's get some otter emojis in the chat to say hello to Miss Betty. And say hi to Sarah. Hi, Sarah. Hello. How's hi, it going? Hey. Who are you working with today? What are you up to? What's your job? Tell us everything. My name is Sarah. I'm one of our mammalogists. I'm joined by our other fellow mammalogist, Katie, who's in the corner. Um, Madeline's not showing her right now. That's okay. She gets no love. Hi, Katie. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then today I'm working with Benny. Benny is one of our three Southern Seattle's. She is eight years old. Um, she'll be nine next month, actually. Or no, sorry, in a few months, she'll be nine. And um, we also have Millie out here. Millie is five. And then we have Chloe, who is seven. Amazing. And welcome, everybody. We just got a big ticket viewer. So hello, welcome. We're here live at the Aquarium of the Pacific. And you have joined us for a cute contest with the Aquarium of the Pacific and the San Diego Zoo. So stay tuned. We're going to be throwing it back and forth between the zoo and the aquarium today for some utterly adorable content. And so you're going to have to vote at the end. Who do you think won the cute contest? It's going to be really, really hard. It's going to be ready. ready. Okay, well, don't play favorites, Sarah. I, mean, I, I know it's hard not to. <laughs> All right, so tell us a little bit about Betty. What kind of animal is she? Yeah, so she is a southern sea otter. There are also northern sea otters, but she is southern. Um, so there are only a little over 3,000 left out in the wild. So they are endangered. They're very endangered. Um, under human care, we have three. What's going to be a Betty? Um, we have Millie, or Millie's in the far end, and then Chloe in the middle. Um, and these three southern sea otters are all rescued. They all stranded along the coast here and were deemed non releasable. And then they came here to live out the rest of their life under human care. Um, one of the cutest things I think about Betty, uh, we call it um, putting things in her pocket. So these animals <laughs> can stuff things in their pocket, they can hold on to things. So if I give her a couple pieces of food, she can stuff it under her armpit. We'll see if she does it right now. Sometimes they don't do it on land. Oh no, we just have to be really cute instead. Yeah, just, just a little bit cuter. Just um, a little bit. Under cuter. the pocket, they store things. So in the wild, they can store a rock or an urchin. If they grab, dive down, grab food items, they can store it under that armpit. It's pretty cute. It might be pretty gross. If we did not, armpits might be smelly. <laughs> um, but that's really normal for them. Yeah, she's just oh, she's back so up. focused. And it's okay. basically just extra skin under the armpit, which is pretty cute. I also think their paws are adorable. Um, so they are marine mammals, but they look very terrestrial and they can pause so they're not up to the cat. Um, they do have nails that can come out. So I'm gonna see if she can stand up um, and she can grab onto the turret. So you can see those paws a little bit closer. Oh my goodness, TikTok, yeah. isn't that utterly adorable? Let's get some other emojis in the chat if you thought that was really, really cute. Welcome to everybody who's just joining us. 
We are here live at the Aquarium of the Pacific in Long Beach, California. My name is Madeline. I am behind the camera here at the Aquarium today. And in just a few minutes, in fact, in just about a minute, um, we are going to head over to the San Diego Zoo for a little cute contest. So at the end of this live stream, we'll have to decide who wins the cute contest. Will it be our Aquarium of the Pacific Otters? Or will it be who San Diego Zoo has in store? What do you guys think? So far, I don't know. Otters, they're really adorable. But we love our friends at the San Diego Zoo. This is such an awesome opportunity to go live with them. And in just a few minutes, we're going to be here on TikTok Live. In the meantime, please comment below where you're watching from. And we're going to get started with some really, really adorable content today. And make sure you're answering quest or throwing questions in the chat. And we're trying to get to as many as possible. Very cool. So again, once again, we're here live in the Aquarium of the Pacific in Long Beach, California with our otters here inside the sea otter habitat. And it's going to be a really, really close call for this new contest, don't you think, Sarah? I think so. You can also see Betty is stacking caps right now. Pretty cool. These animals can use uh, tools out in the wild. And here she can stack two cups together. And then hand them back to me. Oh, my this goodness. This just demonstrates how they use those tools, so they'll use rocks and other items to break open their few items in the wild, which is pretty incredible. incredible. All right, San Diego Zoo, it's your turn for our dual cute contest. Take it away, San Diego Zoo. Thank you so much to our friends at the Aquarium of the Pacific and thank you TikTok. We are here with a very, very special animal ambassador today and two of our awesome wildlife care specialists. Can you guys introduce yourselves and share a little bit about our friend here? Hi everyone, we are so excited to be a part of this contest. We're also very confident about this contest. <laughs> about this, contest. Uh, this is Jen, my name is Ryan and we are wildlife care specialists here at the San Diego Zoo Safari Park. This little cutie is my friend, Fernando. And Fernando is called a lesser anteater, also known as a tamandua. Uh, they are found in areas around South America. And right now he is actually showing off his foraging skills. They are known to eat a lot of insects in the wild. In fact, they could eat up to 8,000 insects in just one day, but that tongue does all the work. It's really nice and sticky. And believe it or not, it's up to 16 inches long. So he's really showing off that ability to get to all of those bugs at the end of that tube. Now they are known as climbers. They live up in the trees of South America. Just by looking at his cute little arms, uh, you can see that he is very, he could be very strong. They pull themselves up and down trees, no problem at all. They got really big claws to help them from grasping those branches. And they have a really cool prehensile tail to help them grab onto those branches. Now, uh, in the cute contest, just by looking at him, uh, we call it his vest that he has on his back. Uh, but they're nicknamed the black vested tamandua because of this really cute pattern on his back. Uh, there's different species of tamandua with different colorations. And this is actually one of those types. Fernando here has been an animal ambassador with us his whole life. And he, with his cuteness, has stolen a lot of parts and he has really made an impact for his species. He does behind the scene tours where guests get to meet him and he gets to show off some of those natural adaptations that he has. And can you share with TikTok how old Fernando is? He is five years old. And they can live into their late teens. So uh, we've had him since he was about a year old and he was about half the size. <laughs> He's come a long way for sure. <laughs> and for those of you just joining us, we're here at the San Diego Zoo Safari Park. And we are showcasing one of our cutest, cutest animals. His name is Fernando, he's a tamandua, and we're here with our wildlife care specialist to share a little bit more information about this awesome species. So please share your comments and questions in the chat and we'll be happy to get back to you. <laughs> and we're also so excited to be here at the Aquarium of the Pacific in this cute contest. So for those who uh, may have just joined, can you share what Fernando's nominon right here? Yeah, so they are insectivores. And so he is actually munching on, very gracefully, by the way, uh, mealworms and waxworms. That is something that we use for our training. 
And as you can tell by him really using that tongue, look at how fast he can flick his tongue to get to all of his food. They can eat really quickly so they can get as much of those insects in the wild as they possibly can. Awesome. And can you share some more fun facts about their tongue, like how long they are? And Yes, for those of you just tuning in, his tongue is up to 16 inches long. 16 inches. And you might be wondering, where on earth does he store that tongue? Well, it's actually connected to his sternum. So uh, they'll stick it all the way out. They don't have teeth, so their tongue has to do all of the work. So when they slurp up those bugs, those bugs will go directly into his stomach and they have really strong stomach muscles that can really digest their food. They eat about a pound of insects a day. That's about 8,000 bugs in just one day. So uh, this is a very, very, very small portion of what he can get in a day. Just a little snack. And can you tell us a little bit more about their tails and how it helps them um, adapt to their environment? Yeah, so he's actually showcasing that pretty well. It's called a prehensile tail. It acts like another arm or another leg. So as they cruise around the trees in South America, they will wrap that tail around a branch and they can hang completely upside down just by that tail alone. So it really helps them in maneuvering in the wild. So uh, we actually have some uh, training that you might get a chance to see in a little bit that he will actually, or another family member might show off that really cool adaptation uh, that they have for living up in the trees. So thank you so much, Ryan. We're going to toss it back over to the Aquarium in Pacific because I'm pretty sure they have some cute friends who want to pop on and say hello. Hello, everybody. Testing, testing. Let me know if you can hear me. <laughs> we have some more. Oh, there we go. Hi, TikTok. Welcome back. We're here at the Aquarium Pacific. We ran so fast back to Long Beach, California from San Diego Zoo. Just kidding. We're having so much fun hanging out with the San Diego Zoo today for our cute contest. Let's get some blue hearts in the chat if you're having fun so far. Let us know if you're enjoying this cute contest. So I think it's going to be very tough between our sea otters and our friends over at the San Diego Zoo. But our sea otters are coming right back. Stay tuned, just a second. Love seeing the blue hearts in the chat. Thank you so much for joining us. All right, so we're back here at the Aquarium of the Pacific here in Long Beach, California. And now I'm with Mammalogist Katie. Hi, Katie. Hello. Who do you have hanging out with us today? So I have Chloe, a little image in her cage right now. But she is uh, just a little bit younger than Betty. So Betty is about to turn nine, Chloe is uh, about eight years old. She's doing a fun little sitting game. That is really cute, <laughs> she, TikTok. What she's do you think? She's standing on her full hair slippers. She's <laughs> doing a little spin. That's pretty cute. That's utterly adorable. <laughs> Very cool. And so can you tell us a little bit about sea otter lifespans? A lot of people are interested. Um, how long do sea otters live? Totally. So both uh, Betty and Chloe are sort of middle age for our sea otters. Um, the oldest sea otters we've had here are back to their early 20s, and those are some of the oldest sea otters that we know of. So out in their natural habitat, that's pretty unusual. They probably get to be about 10 or 15 years old. But, um, you know, here in a place like the aquarium where we can take care of them since they're older years, then they can live to be 21, 22 years old. Amazing. And all of our otters are non-releasable rescues, right, Katie? Yeah, that's correct. So all of our sea otters, uh, unfortunately, when they were very young, stranded along the central coast of California, luckily for them, they were rehabilitated by the Monterey Bay Aquarium. Um, and now they get to live here with us and we get to take really good care of them. Amazing. And we're so lucky to be able to provide a home for them, our rescued southern sea otters here at the very above the Pacific. <laughs> so right now you're doing a really great example. Ooh, a little shrimp flip there. Yeah. Um, you're doing a really great example of something we call husbandry behaviors. Absolutely. And what are some of the husbandry behaviors that our animals know here, especially the sea otters? Yeah, that's a great question. So husbandry behaviors are basically just behaviors that help us with our animals' health care. So that can be something as simple as just sitting here calmly and letting me kind of take a look at her. Um, but it can also go into things like uh, showing us her different body parts and opening up her mouth. So Chloe's really good at showing me her shiny white teeth. Look at those jumpers! Oh, oh my goodness, Chloe. Those are really good for breaking open different shell organisms uh, and eating them. Um, so yeah, that's a really important thing that we want Chloe to be comfortable doing so I don't have to, you know, try to pry her mouth open at any point. She can actually <laughs> just, she knows that if she opens up her mouth, she's going to get a big handful of food as a reward. 
especially if she's nice and calm and kind of lets me take a look. So that's a really important part to bring Oh, that is too cute. We have some cuteness going on in the background with Mulja Sarah. Is that Betty again? Yep, being really cute. Okay, so a lot of people are saying, can you boop them? Can you boop them? Please boop them. But we are not booping our honors right now, unfortunately, Katie. Can that's you tell right. us a little bit about uh, our, our help? things that we're doing, our biosecurity <laughs> measures. Yeah, our biosecurity measures, unfortunately, we have a, have a no grouping clause right now. So we actually have to be really careful with our sea otters because sea otters can contract COVID. Um, so we actually have a pretty strict biosecurity um, set of rules right now for our sea otters. So you might notice that both Sarah and I are wearing N95 masks. Um, we also had to uh, wash our hands right before we came in. I'm actually wearing gloves. Um, so we're actually really careful about that. Only a small number of people will be planning right now to work with our sea otters or even prepare their food. Um, and that's because we just want to really, you know, not take any risks as far as these guys getting sick. We want to be really careful. Yeah, and we actually have a video on our feed all about how otters are susceptible to COVID and the biosecurity measures that we are taking here at the Aquarium of the Pacific. So definitely scroll through our feed to check that out. There's also a lot more otter videos in store for you as well. All right, so we're getting tons of questions coming in. Um, let's talk about what they eat a little bit. Just to remind everyone, we're here at the Aquarium of the Pacific in Long Beach, California, and we're joined with the San Diego Zoo today. So stay tuned. We're going to throw them back on camera in just a little bit for our cute contest. Um, and so let's talk about what our otters eat here at the Aquarium, Katie. Yeah, absolutely. So she is eating sort of a base diet of shrimp and clam and squid. So these are a couple of the shrimp that she's oh. getting. She loves the shrimp. That's her favorite. Um, her least favorite is probably the squid, but it's a good kind of moisture-rich food that we like to give our sea otters. Um, so they all definitely have their personal preferences, but out in their natural habitat, sea otters eat a huge variety of shellfish. Um, and so they actually will pretty much just eat anything, just about anything that has a shell. And one of the most interesting things I think about sea otters is that they are tool users. So they will actually find rocks or, or hard objects that they can use to break open shells of organisms like clams or mussels um, out their natural habitat. They'll use those tools to break them open and that's how they'll keep it. Pretty oh, amazing. And I see Sarah and Betty over there working on some enrichment. What are some enrichments that our sea otters get here at the Aquarium of the Pacific? Yeah, so you can see a great example of a couple of our toys here at the Aquarium. Our sea otters have no shortage of enrichment items for the Aquarium. Um, so we have a couple different toys. A lot of them are similar to toys that you might play with with your dog or cat at home. A lot of times we'll just let our otters play with some freely. We'll also involve them in different behaviors. Sometimes we can have them do retrieval. They'll see if I can get Chloe to retrieve you. Fine. They're right next to you, girlfriend. Fine. <laughs> oh, yeah. Key to my heart, Chloe. Oh, you have it. Thank you oh, so much. That was so pleasing. Exactly. Let's give Chloe a round of applause. She did such a good job retrieving that key for Katie. Yeah, and you can see Betty doing a really cute behavior too. While she's actually taking some of the toys and putting them in that ring there. Chloe is just pooping. Yeah. Yeah, she's playing <laughs> basketball over there. Yeah. She is a baller. We all know Betty's a baller. That's why her name is Betty. Betty's a baller. Oh, this is so much fun. This is so cool. So, great question came in. How can you tell the difference between a male otter and a female otter? That is a good question. Right now, we have all female sea otters here at the aquarium. Um, so they are actually a little bit smaller than male sea otters. So male sea otters are, look pretty much the same, but they are just a little bit bigger. They get to um, they weigh about uh, 10 to 20 kilos heavier than the female sea otters. So right now, all of our girls are about 20 kilos or 45 pounds, uh, 45 to 50 pounds. But males are just a little bit bigger than that. Very cool. And so I can see that we have ice in this habitat. Is that part of their natural habitat? Do they live in ice? Great question. Uh, not really. So southern sea otters are native to the central coast of California. So they don't usually come into contact with a lot of snow or ice out in their natural habitat. We actually just give it to them as an enrichment item. So it's appropriate that you're asking about it. <laughs> um, so they actually just really like to roll around in it. They like to use it as part of their sort of grooming routine. Sometimes they just like to crunch on it like that is doing. So we have two otters right here. We have Chloe, which is closest to us. And, <clears throat> excuse me, getting excited. Chloe, who's closest to us, and then Betty, the southern sea otter. You can see that they look really similar. Yeah. How do you guys, as mammalogists, how are you able to tell the difference between the two? That is another, that's a good question. Honestly, some people are better than others. <laughs> um, 
I would say if you look at them pretty closely, it's easier if they're right next to each other. Chloe has sort of a little bit of a longer face. Uh, currently, she also has slightly longer whiskers. Betty tends to have two more whiskers pretty short. Um, it seems like kind of a silly way to tell them apart, but it actually stays pretty consistent. Yeah. Chloe also has just a tiny bit more white on her chin and her chest, which might be kind of hard to see right now. Um, but Betty is, is pretty dark in color. One of uh, my favorite Betty is in the you can see right now. Betty likes to eat shrimp shells. So most of our sea otters are really good at peeling their shrimp. You can see Chloe, that she actually is doing it so fast, you might not even be able to tell that she's doing it, but she's taking the peel off her shrimp really fast. But Betty just eats it whole. Betty likes to just. Yeah, you can see Betty, Betty's perfectly happy not getting fed all of her food right at the time, unless she eats shells in between. <laughs> She's like, she's I'll taking her food and then taking the shells from Chloe. That is too cute. What do you think, TikTok? Are our otters cute or what? Well, today, if you're just joining us, we are doing a cute contest with our friends over at the San Diego Zoo. And we're going to throw it back to them in just a few more minutes. But in the meantime, I don't know. I think they have it. I don't know. I think our otters might have a feet. We'll see. We'll have Maybe. to find out. Have they seen her clap yet? We'll see it as much as we can. It's adorable. Let's see. Do you guys, can you give a round of applause for Betty and we'll see if she'll give you one back? I put no clapping emojis in the comments. What do you think, Betty? Oh, you hold think on, hold on. Pause, please. She's eating her trash. She's out. very busy, everyone. Sorry, sorry, sorry. What do you think, Chloe? Do you think that you're going to win the cute contest today with San Diego Zoo? Yeah, Betty. No, one more show. One more time. She's on her own time. It's very it's time. to clean up the habitat. She does her part by picking up all of our shrimp cells. Are you trying to get here? Good. Thank you. Betty. Betty, lots of emojis in the chat. We'd love to see if that is so cute. What do you think, TikTok? I don't know. San Diego has a hard one today. All right, everybody, we have a few more minutes with our southern sea otters here at the aquarium before we throw it back to San Diego Zoo. Just there are a couple more questions. A um, couple questions that came in about the target pole for you, Sarah. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, their use and why we're using them so specifically right now? Yes, so they are target poles. That is exactly what they're used to. They're not used to do anything other than to guide our animals. Uh, so this is basically like a PVC cap. I mean, it's basically just a point of direction for them to put their nose and their paws on. Um, so basically, we train them when they first come back to do this. It's just a great way for us to be able to hold their focus. So imagine being an animal not speaking the language that the trainer's speaking. Um, and not knowing what they're asking. So this really just puts their focus into one spot. Um, and then from there, we can train a lot of pleasantry or healthcare behaviors. So we can train high drop. So you see Betty, um, when we ask her to target, she just stays there. I can move my hand around. We can eventually train her to do voluntary eye drops um, just by having her focus on that one thing. Um, it also is a great way uh, for us to keep their paws occupied if we want to go do cat tile on them. Um, because the otters need to grab things. So if their paws are focused on just holding on to the target pool, it's easy for us to maneuver and touch their flippers and really just keep them focused on something else other than uh, as touching their body and things like that. Definitely. And a couple of questions came in. Do they have to learn to float? Is that something that otter pups learn from their bonds? Um, they're actually very buoyant when they're little, so they're protected they fur. They actually can't really, they can't really dive when they're little. They have to learn that. Um, so they do float, and they get a fresh, new uh, kind of fur, and they learn how to groom themselves and learn how to be able to dive down. But it's not something they know at first. They generally stay with their mother for the first six months because they're learning all of those things. They're learning how to forage, how to dive, uh, how to get their own food, but they're also still nursing from their mothers uh, for quite a while as their pups. Um, and so floating is actually pretty easy for them. So um, they are pretty buoy basically because of their fur. Um, but also, if you look at them, the lungs make up a lot of their bodies. So they can be pretty buoyant because they have a lot of lungs uh, in their chest, and that makes them float pretty well. Amazing. And so if you're just joining us, we're here live at the Aquarium of the Pacific in Long Beach, California, hanging out with our sea otters. We're actually going to throw it back to San Diego in about two, three or two minutes. Um, but I have a sneak peek of what's coming up, and I don't know. It's really cute, you guys. So we might have a run for our money. Um, you met Fernando from San Diego a little while ago. And what's coming up next is even cuter, if you can believe it. I know it's really hard to believe. But in the meantime, we have about two more minutes here at the uh, Ferry of the Pacific before we throw it back over to San Diego. Let's answer a couple more questions. Um, just a reminder, let's remind them, Katie, that our otters are rescues. And how can we help sea otters in the wild? Yeah, that's a great question. 
So, like we were saying before, all of our sea otters are rescued. Here in the aquarium, all of them were found stranded as very young pups on the central coast of California. It's something pretty unfortunate, but it does happen. But luckily, they were rehabilitated by the Monterey Bay Aquarium's sea otter program. Um, and so, our lives were really fortunate that they get to kind of live out the rest of their days here at the aquarium with all of the great culture that we get to give for them. Um, and so a way people can help out sea otters is by supporting the sea otter program at the Monterey Bay Aquarium. You can visit us here at the aquarium, or you can check out the Monterey Bay Aquarium as well. But that's pretty much the primary place that southern sea otters are rescued, and that's sort of the, the sort of hub of all of the places that have southern sea otters, um, different zoos and aquariums around the country. They actually all come through that same rescue program at the Monterey Bay Aquarium. Um, so we're pretty lucky. We are actually running a little low on food in here. That's fine. It's actually perfect timing. Um, if San Diego is ready, we can definitely hang out with the otters for another minute, but we're just about ready to throw it. Okay, cool. They are ready. Let's throw it over to San Diego Zoo. Everybody show some love for San Diego Zoo. Thank you so much for sharing your adorable otters with us, everyone in the Aquarium of the Pacific. They are so, so sweet. And thank you for sharing all the incredible work you're doing. We're back here at the San Diego Zoo Safari Park with our wildlife care specialist, Ryan. And she's about to introduce you to a very sweet Tamman duo. Well, <laughs> welcome back. Uh, before we uh, took a break, you met Fernando, who was a Tamandua. Uh, and now you get to meet some family members, a incredible, precious Tamanduo. We got Cora as the Tamandua. And then we have baby Mochi. Uh, on the cuteness scale, you really cannot beat a baby Tamandua. Look at how Tamandorable they truly are. <laughs> For those of you just meeting our Tamanduas, these animals are insectivores found in South America. And right now what they're eating, it's something called an insectivore diet. So it's a nice insect replacement. Um, and as you can see by them, chowing down they definitely enjoy this diet for sure now cora here being the tamandua she is four years old and mochi is actually only two months old believe it or not mochi was born in july and you might notice that mochi's hanging out on mama's back for the most part uh, this is a natural thing that they do so in the wild when mom gives birth they live up in the trees so it really does help to have baby hanging out on mom's back as she travels around in South America. You can kind of tell on those cute little hands of theirs that they've got these big claws already. And notice how he is gripping onto mom pretty well. Uh, he is all, Mochi is already using that upper body strength. Uh, we have really been impressed with how Mochi has figured out some of those natural behaviors of climbing. I talked about that prehensile tail earlier. Uh, Mochi has actually started to learn how to wrap uh, Mochi's tail around branches and is very curious as you can tell. He really likes to uh, check his environment out. Every day is a new day, uh, but with Mama here, uh, he definitely can explore and really take in a lot. With our training, we have positive reinforcement training. And so he is uh, already getting trained to be an ambassador. He's already met guests here at the San Diego Zoo Safari Park. Uh, has already made such a huge impact for the Tamandua species. So we're very, very um, excited and proud of Cora for being such a great Tamandua. Uh, so we're very excited about having both of them here. Thank you, Ryan. And we have a few questions coming in from TikTok. If you're just joining us, we're here with our Tamanduo, Mom Cora and Little Cup Mochi. And Ryan, our wildlife care specialist, is answering your questions. Ryan, can you share a little bit about um, why tamanduas ride on their mom's back and for how long they typically do that for? Yes. So tamanduas uh, in the wild, they climb up in the trees. So they're called arboreal. So it really does help mama when uh, the baby is born that they uh, automatically will start to hang out on mom's back. It helps her for locomotion as she's traveling around in the trees. 
and typically they will be hanging out on mom's back for up to eight months at, on average. So uh, when Mochi was first born, we really started to right away see that natural behavior of uh, hanging out on Cora's back. And earlier, Cora, uh, you might have seen Cora climbing up here with Mochi on her back. So she can definitely travel around with ease. Um, it's very natural for them to even, she can climb up and down the seat while Mochi's still on her back. And uh, Mochi's actually learning to climb a little bit too. He's getting very uh, confident and curious and learning how to use that prehensile tail and that really incredible upper body strength that they have uh, to start learning how to, you know, climb around successfully. And mom is a, and Cora here is a really attentive mother and has really been um, a great, great mom for Mochi. And TikTok was wondering, what is this specifically that they're kind of nomming down on right now? I know you mentioned they're insectivores, but what is this that we're looking at? That's a great question. And yes, they are definitely nomming down right now. Uh, they uh, are classified as insectivores. And what this is, it's an insectivore diet. It's an insect replacement. In the wild, they eat about 8,000 insects in just one day. So we want to make sure that our insectivores, like the tamanduas, are having adequate nutrition. And so as you can tell by how great they're nomming down on that food <laughs> they really do enjoy this diet for sure so it just is an insect replacement we also use other types of insects um, as well they really do enjoy mealworms and wax worms we really like to use that for their training especially uh, but this is just one of their components to what they eat every single day here at the san diego zoo safari park and can you share a little bit more about what makes them different from a regular anteater or a greater anteater? That's a really great question. So they are related to the giant anteater and they get their name lesser anteater just because of their size. So the giant anteater can get up to a hundred pounds. The lesser anteater like Cora and Mochi here, they are on average about 20 to 30 pounds. Um, so they are not as large as that giant anteater. So they are in that same family. They're also related to the sloth and believe it or not, the armadillo. That's huh. always the one that's the, the, the wild card <laughs> when we tell <laughs> guests about who is they are related to. And I think it's pretty obvious by what we're looking at here, but can you share TikTok just a little bit about what makes these two so cute since this is a cute contest and talk a little bit about their personalities and what makes them so special? Where do I begin on this? <laughs> that is a great question. Uh, Mochi here uh, has really stolen the hearts of our entire team. Uh, Mochi is very confident. Mochi likes to run around at full speed. And when you see a baby tamandua run, it looks like a gallop. That's right. They gallop. <laughs> and uh, we have a stuffed animal that Mochi likes to interact with quite a bit. That is also an anteater. So uh, he likes to play with that stuff. Oh, here it is. This is we haven't named the stuffed animal yet, but uh, this is a really great way for Mochi to still have that natural behavior of hanging out on mom's back. But this, is, this stuffed animal is kind of like a surrogate mama. So if Cora needs to have some, some me time or a Mochi needs to have a little bit of um, independence. This is a really great tool that we use. And watching Mochi roll around with a stuffed <laughs> animal, my goodness, uh, it is a very, very cute sight to see. And sometimes we think of, like, wow, we get paid to do this. <laughs> so, uh, this is a, it's a very, very cute thing, especially when Mochi is in full playtime. It is a very, very cute thing for sure. Yeah, and for everyone just tuning in, we're here at the San Diego Zoo Safari Park with our Tim and Duas. This is Mama Cora and her pup. And we're here with our wildlife care specialist, Ryan. She's answering all of your questions that are coming through here. And Ryan, you just mentioned how much you love your job. And I'm, I'm wondering if you can share with everybody a little bit more about your background and what brought you here. Yes, yeah, so I have been passionate about wildlife my entire life. When I was five years old, I knew this is what I wanted to do. 
and uh, being able to work with different species of our ambassadors. We have a big variety of animal ambassadors here. Um, being able to work with them and educate guests and connect guests from all over the world about certain species like the tamandua, um, it really makes, it really warms my heart and it really is a passion driven job that we have here uh, because every animal deserves a chance. In San Diego Zoo Safari Park, uh, we really want our animals to thrive. And that's why we have breeding programs like for the Tamandua, like for the Tamandua, uh, like Cora here and Mochi, because our main goal is to save wildlife. Every animal has an important role in their environment, and it's up to us as humans to make sure that they can stick around. So it's a very, very rewarding job for me because I get to show this incredible Tamanduo uh, to the public and really make that connection. Just seeing them right now, I can imagine all of you watching has already made a huge connection with them for sure. Thank you so much, Ryan. It's definitely such a special place to work it and is. getting to work with the two of them. Can you share a little bit about what sort of behavioral <laughs> training you do? Look at Mochi. Oh, a perfect backpack yeah. moment. <laughs> Our training is based on positive reinforcement training. So uh, we, uh, reinforcement can be a big variety for different animals, but for them, they are insectivores. So, uh, oh, look at all those bugs right there. Uh, <laughs> but with our training, we do a big variety of training. Not only do we show off whoo, natural <laughs> behaviors, such as a climbing behavior, such as this, we also can do medical training, the positive reinforcement. Uh, so it can really empower our animals to choose to participate. So when uh, Cora and Mochi, we basically asked them if they wanted to participate and meet all of you wonderful people. And uh, when they when they approached us, we knew it was they were wanting to participate. If they didn't want to come out, guess what? That's okay. We have plenty of other cute animals that can be a part of this contest as well. Uh, <laughs> but we have a lot of really strong uh, training behaviors that we have with all of our animals here at the San Diego Zoo Safari Park. Um, as a way of really allowing our animals choice and control in anything that they do at any time. Awesome. And, and TikTok's wondering, can you share a little bit more about their their patterns and their fur and the little vest they've got going on? Yeah, I would love to. <laughs> uh, you can see, oh, look at that climb. That was impressive. So, buddy. <laughs> so, uh, there's different species of tamandua, and the vest, uh, it depends on the region but they have different patterns on them. So um, for this particular species, uh, it looks like the party vest. How cute is that? Uh, <laughs> but their nickname is the black vested tamandua. So um, it's a really unique uh, pattern that they have. You got, for those of you that have been with us this whole time, <laughs> uh, you met their father, uh, you met Mochi's dad, Fernando, who also had the same black vested pattern. Um, other patterns can include just the, the uniform, <laughs> <laughs> you see that that prehensile tail right there? You see how he's learning to use that? That is incredible. <laughs> oh, and, we, and we won. I think we I think that was the winning. Uh oh. Oh no. <laughs> Sorry about that, everyone. We had a little Bochi took over the filming. That was that was <laughs> insane vote for me. Yeah. Um, very competitive in this competition. He feels very strongly about he being is. voted as the cutest. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So uh, with their hair pattern, it's very coarse. Um, it does not, oh, there we go. Yeah. Um, it is not soft. It might appear that way, uh, but their hair is pretty thick and coarse because in the rainforest of South America, they want to make sure that they stay as dry as they possibly can. So that uh, rain fall in the wild, it will help keep their skin pretty dry. Um, they actually don't have fur or hair on that tail, again, that prehensile tail, because that helps to grip a little bit easier. Oh, perfect timing right here. That will actually help to grip. Um, grip we have a lot of action grip. happening here. So again, this is, uh, the stuffed animal is kind of like a surrogate mama. We want to make sure that Moshi's still um, exhibiting natural behaviors such as interacting. Um, and you know, you can kind of see that he's pinching with his claws. Again, that's a natural behavior. They are figuring all of this out and they really kind of like babies of our own where they learn how to 
uh, what everything means. This is very good for him and very stimulating. <laughs> and oh, Moshe's, no, he's trying to take over the camera again, but I can't be saying, click me, I'm the cutest. <laughs> <laughs> but it's about time for us to pass things back over to our friends at Aquarium of Pacific. If, if they're ready, I know they have a few more otters to share with you, but Mochi's just here kind of stealing the, the camera right now. <laughs> Hi, San Diego Zoo team. We're ready over here. If you want to All throw right, it back we'll send over. it back to you. Thank you so much. Awesome. Hi, everybody. What's up, TikTok? Welcome back to the Aquarium of the Pacific. Shout out to our friends at San Diego Zoo. Um, they had a cute otter toy, so I want to shout out to Jack, who ran up an otter plushie from our gift store. Um, I kind of need that Tam and Dua stuffy, so I think we're going to have to do a trade for an otter stuffy. Unfortunately, we are not going to give this otter stuffy <laughs> to our sea otters because we will never see it again, um, and there will just be fluff and, and stuffed animal guts all over our exhibit. So that was really adorable. What did you all think of that incredible live stream? With the Tamman duo, all of the puns were so on point. Shout out to the San Diego Zoo team. That was incredible. And with a name like Mochi, I mean, I really think it's going to have to be a tie. What do you think, TikTok? Who do you think won the cute contest? I think it's personally a tie because Mochi just sealed the deal. He was adorable. So we're back here at the Aquarium of the Pacific hanging out with the otters Betty and Chloe, right? Oh, and there's some lightning happening in this habitat. Very funny. And here comes Millie, right? Remember yes. Algecera? Yes, we had Millie in the back while we were doing some filming. She is uh, only been in the aquarium for about two years now, and she's not quite as used to filming. Uh, so just for safety, Ooh. we moved through to the back. Uh, you guys can probably hear we have a little bit of thunder in the yeah, background. Yeah, we have some thunder and lightning happening here in Long Beach. I don't know if you, you guys down in San Diego are getting it too, or maybe it'll be heading your way soon, but that's exciting. It's a very hot day today too, so that's just a little insight to what's happening. We're obviously live. <laughs> you can't make it. Um, and once again, we're here live at the Aquarium of the Pacific here in Long Beach, California. Today, we're hanging out with our friends at the San Diego Zoo here on TikTok Live for a cute contest. And I don't know, I think it has to be a tie. What do you think, Sarah? You saw a little bit I of the Tampa duo. I they mean, were... look at these faces. I know. I think you're playing favorites. So. I hate those. Don't I have to? I think you might have I think they would get mad at me if I said I, I chose somebody else for them. <laughs> so, Sarah, as someone who takes care of sea otters every single day, what are your favorite parts about working with sea otters? Um, they're so mischievous, so I definitely have to say, you always expect the unexpected. Like Madeline said, if you were to give them that stuffed animal, we would never see it again. <laughs> it's amazing the items in an otter exhibit that's perfectly otter-proof, how they find a way to make it mad. Um, they will find a way to break something and then bring it to us, slide it under our door in the morning. Uh, they'll rip apart a toy and then bring back a corner to us. Um, they are just, they're very mischievous, love to find things. Um, in our holding area, they love to kind of go crazy with the plumbing and just stick their toys in the plumbing area <laughs> and stuff. So it's just, it's really funny. They're really curious. Um, Otter chaos. I love Otterly. Otterly yeah. chaotic. <laughs> um, like Madeline said, too, I, you could hear the storm. So we do have skylights above our otter exhibits. So sometimes the otters are really cute, too. They'll sit um, and just look up at the skylights and they'll watch the rain or they'll watch seagulls or ridges. Um, so they're just kind of, they're really adorable. They're always finding something to do um, and looking around at, at different things that I wouldn't expect. Amazing. And Sarah, do you have any tips for anyone who wants to become a mammologist like you or maybe work with animals one day, either at the San Diego Zoo or at the Aquarium of the Pacific? Yeah, of course. So um, getting an internship or volunteering is definitely a great way in. Um, you get to know animals, you get to know uh, people that work at these facilities, you get to know the heart of birth. Um, so we definitely have interns that come in and don't realize how much of it is uh, food preparations, how much of it is uh, animal monitoring or the observation. Um, it's not just playing with the animals, it's, it's interacting with them, but also the training, um, a lot of paperwork, uh, observation, all that fun stuff. Um, but it just takes a while to learn how to, how to be around an animal a lot larger than you. Um, so I definitely recommend volunteerships and internships as well. Amazing. What are you feeding them right now, these little brightly colored Yes. Yummy so let's things. see if I can get this in the camera. Yeah. So these are a little bit of clam or ice treats. Uh, so we make them a clam smoothie. Oh, you're uh, very close. You want that one? Don't you? Yeah, that one. For um, they, we make them smoothies every morning. We give them a syringe with their vitamins in it. Um, they are trained to hold their syringe, uh, and we put it in their mouth, and it has their vitamins. So we use that same concoction to make little treats, and then we put non-toxic food coloring in. Um, and they really seem to love them because 
it's that icy texture and um, with just a little bit of food coloring. Oh, I'm sorry, Chloe. Yeah, I don't know how delicious a clam popsicle seems, but to a viewer sea otter, I think it would be a delicious summer treat. They or fall treat. Yeah, treat. Exactly. All, all year round. They obviously love it. They're going crazy on it. This has been so much fun hanging out with the San Diego Zoo. What do you think, TikTok? Should this be like a regular thing? Should the San Diego Zoo and the Aquarium of the Pacific unite to take over TikTok with just all of the cuteness? Let's see some blue hearts in the chat if you agree. If I had my phone on me, I'd be spamming you all with blue hearts because this has been so much fun today. And in just a few more minutes, we're going to throw it back over to the San Diego Zoo uh, for their wrap up. I learned so much already. This is the, the Tamandua is a species I really didn't know anything about. And now it's on the list of one of my favorite animals and I can't wait to go see them in person down in San Diego. So I want to thank the San Diego Zoo for hanging out with us. Let's see a few more minutes until we head back over there. But that was awesome, TikTok. I'll see lots of blue hearts in the chat. Once again, our sea otters here at the Aquarium of the Pacific are named Chloe, who's hanging out closest to us. Um, Betty, and then Millie, is that right? Yeah, and then Millie's in the front. Awesome. All right, we're going to throw it back over to San Diego Zoo. But before we do, I have a question, San Diego Zoo. What is the best part of working with the Tamanduas? I would like to know. All right, Ooh. throwing it over. Thank you so much, Ryan. Can you share what's the best part about working with the Tamanduas? That is a very good question. Um, I would have to say personally, my favorite part about working with them is just getting to see all of those natural behaviors of them. They are so strong. They have such incredible upper body strength. It blows my mind every single time I see it. And this is actually perfect timing because you're actually gonna see that climbing in action. Now, I actually nicknamed these Tamanduas the bodybuilders of South America just because I am so in awe of how well they can climb. She, this is Cora, by the way, a lesser anteater, also known as a Southern Tamanua. Showing, look at how fast she can go, showing off that arboreal climbing behavior. You see how fast she is? They've got these incredible claws that they will kind of use to break onto branches, hang onto branches really well. Now with our enrichment, we want to try and really have them use those natural behaviors. Uh, <laughs> and, so, and, you know, if it's a challenge, guess what? That's what we want. We want them to really work for uh, work their food like they would in the wild. So look at how she's using her prehensile tail. Look at how she's using her claws to grab onto that rope. She's using her claws to hang onto this board like she would in the wild if she's hanging onto a tree or a branch. She's using her sense of smell to find her food. She has that really great tongue where she can flick as fast as she can to get to as much food as she possibly can, or even smell the phone at the same time. <laughs> so we really encourage our animals to use those natural behaviors and to really think about what they're doing. Um, so it's very stimulating for them. <laughs> very stimulating for our animals for sure. Uh, but this is actually a trained behavior that we do for guests for our behind the scenes tours at the San Diego Zoo Safari Park. Uh, so she is actually trained to go from one spot and end up at another, we call it an A to B. But she knows that if she does this whole behavior, look at that tail again, that's incredible. She's using that sense of smell to find her food. And this is the end goal. Look at all of Yay! that reinforcement for doing that behavior. It's absolutely incredible. So she really gets all of those mealworms. She gets that insectivore diet that is an insect replacement for them if you're just tuning in. But she hits the jackpot for doing that incredibly fast <laughs> behavior for sure. Do you know how fast they can run or climb or about how much? Fast Mochi was running early. Yeah, I mean, we could just say pretty fast. They can run fast if needed. They're not known for speed, really, in the wild. The way that they'll really defend themselves, um, even though they're very cute. Remember, they're cute. Uh, they don't have a very cute nickname. Uh, their nickname is the Stinker of the Rainforest. <laughs> Remember, they're still cute. Just look at them. Um, but uh, if you guys have had the honor of smelling a skunk, <laughs> imagine smelling a skunk times four. That's what that smell could do. And if you're a predator in the wild, you're probably going to go the other way if you smell a skunk times four. So that's so uh, that's one way they can defend themselves. Another way, instead of running, 
they can use that prehensile tail like a tripod and stand all the way up. They stick their arms all the way out and make themselves look really intimidating. Those claws are very powerful. They're very strong. Um, so if they need to swipe, um, if they, they actually can vocalize, sounds like a low grumble, uh, but they could actually be a little intimidating too. Um, but then again, they can climb up it to avoid those predators as well. And for those of you just joining us, we are here at the San Diego Zoo Safari Park, and we've been partnered up with our friends over at the Aquarium of the Pacific. Thank you so, so much for inviting us to do this for TikTok, the cute contest. It's hard to beat that, especially on a Monday. Um, we're out here at our Tamandua. Super cute, if you couldn't tell already. Another cute one is the baby over oh. here. Playing with some more, interacting with some more of our enrichment. Yeah. Uh, this is actually made by our volunteers. We have incredible volunteers here at the San Diego Safari Park. And this is our uh, fake termite mount. So this is kind of what they would do in the wild as well. Uh, they have those claws again that they can dig up the dirt to find those bugs. Uh, they have a 16 inch long tongue. So if they're finding these anthills or termite mounds, they're gonna use that tongue to their advantage and get to that, those really hard to reach places. Uh, for those of you that are just meeting Mochi, Mochi is our two month old Tamandua uh, found in South America. Uh, and Mochi here has uh, been really <laughs> having fun with this contest, uh, really trying to beat those otters, which is very <laughs> hard to beat those otters are cute for sure. <laughs> Yeah, I think that I have to agree with the Aquarius yes. of the Pacific that this, it feels like a tie. Yeah, it's it's a hard, this is a hard challenge. Yeah, sure. this is really tricky because <laughs> those otters are adorable. Um, but really, we're just happy to help conserve these animals and support wildlife. And um, Ryan, can you share a little bit about what anyone tuning in can do to help support our mission here? That is a really, really great question. Uh, all of these animals, even our demand was, uh, they are on. They are not in danger, so I'm happy to say that. But some things that can damage their population is habitat loss. These animals live up in trees. If they lose their trees, they lose their homes. Uh, and it, being an insectivore, they control that <laughs> that uh, insect population. So every animal in our world, ha every even the otters, they have really important roles with the otters too. Uh, they have a role and we need to make sure as humans that we let them stick around to continue to do those important roles. Um, if you are feeling like you would like to help us continue to make that impact, please visit our website at San Diego Zoo Wildlife Alliance. Uh, if you're feeling like you would like to donate, um, that makes a huge impact for animals like the Tamanduas here, as well as species all over the world. We have different conservation hubs that focus on different regions of the world to make sure that we are doing everything that we can to make sure animals thrive and continue to do that important role in their environment. Ryan, thank you so much. And thank you, TikTok, for tuning in and for joining <laughs> us for this amazing, cute contest to the Aquarium of the Pacific. This has been so much fun. We should definitely do it again. Um, I think we are about ready to pass it back to you guys if you want to close us out with some super cute otters and thank you so much. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today. That was incredible. If you want to visit the Aquarium of the Pacific, you can. You just can make a reservation of the link in our bio. That was a really hard cute contest. Thank you all so much for joining us today. That was utterly adorable. I learned so much from our friends at the San Diego Zoo, and we're so happy you joined us today, right, Chloe? Wasn't that amazing? <laughs> All right, everybody, thank you so much for joining us again. We'll be live tomorrow here at the Aquarium of the Pacific at 3 p.m. Pacific with our octopus. So definitely come back here on TikTok and join us for that. Make sure you're following us here at the Aquarium of the Pacific and San Diego Zoo, and we hope to see you on a future live stream. Bye-bye, everybody.